Let's get back to our color wheel. And we spoke about the cool colors and the warm colors during our last segment. Uh, now the next extension is to take a look at complementary colors. The complementary color of a hue on the color wheel is the one is the complete opposite. For example, if yellow is at noon, violet is at six o'clock. If, uh, let's see, blue is at noon, then orange is at six o'clock. And we use these complements a lot in creating three-dimensionality, uh, even in nature, more than you may realize. So I'd like to share some of those with you. One of the, uh, the, the prime uh, sort of uh, prime hints or techniques or principles of landscape art is to start in the distance and work toward the foreground. Because if you start in the distance and work toward the foreground, and you think about it, there are things which visually overlap. If I have trees in the foreground that overlap my view of a meadow in the background, I don't want to do the trees first and then try to realistically render the meadow uh, in between uh, the boughs of the tree. So think of, of how something comes from the distance to the foreground. I started out with the sky, which was my most distant feature, the distant mountains, and then on up to uh, the closer features. Uh, sometimes people agonize about uh, working on evergreens. Evergreens in the distance are remarkably simple. And you choose a, a good shade of green, it can be uh, a pine green or a juniper green, and you can just uh, make your strokes so that they imitate the evergreen. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Notice my strokes here. I'm going to do this over here on this dabble sheet just so that you can see how it looks when there's nothing else behind it. Okay, here. Here we have an evergreen tree. Notice how I can render it with just some quick strokes. And it's not going to be perfect. I'm going to have a gap here and maybe a flyaway branch there and some kind of scraggly top to it because that makes it more believable. Uh, you don't want to have something that's too picture perfect because it won't be as appealing and it won't be as believable. So even if you're looking at your evergreens from a medium distance, go ahead and uh, add some imperfections to them. Uh, there's a term in drawing uh, and it's called scumbling. And uh, this, this art term, people have said, well, you, what do you mean by scumbling? Just in, in plain terms, the way I think of scumbling is uh, it's related to scribbling, but it's a sort of an educated scribbling, okay? 